Whether it's about finding a number inside of an array or your smelly sock in your messy room, search algorithms can help you do it. Nah, I'm just joking about that sock part. Only your mom has the power to find that. So in this video, we're gonna discuss two of the most famous searching algorithms, linear search and binary search, which are super important for our DSA interviews and in our day-to-day -day work as a developer as well. So first, we're gonna discuss linear search. Now, what is linear search? As the name suggests, it's linear. That is, it goes in one direction. We have to write a function to search a target in nums array. So target in let's say in this case is zero and nums array is this over here and we're supposed to tell what index does this target is in side of this uh, array. So if the target exists, then we're gonna return its index. Otherwise, we're gonna return minus one. And we have to write this algorithm with O of n time complexity. Okay, let's see. So for example, we have this array over here and target is in the zero, one, two, three, fourth index. So the output is going to be four. But in this case, three, does not exist inside of this array right so that's why the output is minus one that is it does not exist so i'm gonna create a function over here called linear search and it's gonna take two things one is nums and other is target cool so we're gonna run a for loop so it's gonna be pretty straightforward i'm gonna run a for loop over here so it's gonna start from zero it's gonna go to nums dot length that is throughout the array and i'm gonna say i plus plus Right, and it's gonna increment by one. Now inside of it, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say if the target that we're supposed to find, if target is equals to the current uh, index or the current element in the current index, that is nums of i. If these two are equal, then simply we have found our uh, element, right? So I'm gonna simply say return i, that is our index. But let's say if we were not able to find the item inside of this array, so, after this is over, I'm going to simply say return minus one. Easy. That should be good enough. Let's go on and run this. I'm going to say console log. Inside of console log, I'm going to write this linear search function. And I'm just going to provide it with this array and the target, which is zero. Let's go to our terminal and I'm going to run linear search. And yep, you see, we get the fourth index. Awesome. Now let's try to search something which is not inside of this array. So it should give us minus one. Yep, four for this one, minus one for this one. Awesome. Great, let's try to take our code and try to run it on lead code. For that, I'm gonna open my DSA book over here and I'm gonna go to, uh, our topic is search algorithms, right? So I'm gonna do search algorithms and you can see we have variety of different questions over here and I'm looking for linear search. So I'm going to click on this link over here and it's going to take me to lead code. I know this uh, question is not titled as linear search, but don't worry about it. This, the linear search code will work perfectly in this one. The requirements are the same. As you can see, we have this uh, array over here and we're supposed to find a target element inside of it. Okay. So I'm going to try to take our code from over here and try to run this over here, right? Let's try to click on run. Okay, it's ran successfully. Let's click on submit. Amazing, we have a solution that beats 70.58% of the users with JavaScript, awesome. Let's try to see what is the time and space complexity for this algorithm. So over here, as you can see, we have this one for loop. That means this is going to be running nums.length times, which in this case was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So this will run seven times. So seven is going to be time complexity for this. And as you already know, when we have any constant, we convert it to n. So this will have O of n time complexity, O of seven time complexity or O of n time complexity, right? So I'm gonna simply come over here and say O of n. And simply for space complexity, we're not creating any new variables over here. We're not occupying any space. So simply the space complexity is O of one, easy. Now, I know some of you might be thinking that why do we need to write this algorithm when we already have the find function in JavaScript? So find function, if you guys don't know, does the exact same thing that this code is doing over here. But sometimes in your even JavaScript interviews as well, you may encounter that you're supposed to create a polyfill for find. So this is the algorithm that you can use over there and show the interviewer that this is how you can create the polyfill for find. Now there can be cases as well where the element appears more than once and the question requires you to find that element multiple times. 
right so let's discuss the global linear search but before moving forward in this video if you're passionate about software development like me listen up i've got something amazing to share with you introducing cryo.do the ultimate experiential learning platform designed to skyrocket your career in software development with cryo you won't just tackle theory you will dive into hands-on projects that mirror real world scenarios Imagine building a high-scale web backend for food ordering apps like Zomato or crafting an OTT platform like Netflix. This is learning by doing at its best. But what sets Cryo apart? The mentors are seasoned pros from Google, Amazon, Walmart and more. So you will gain insights that your regular study materials can't provide and you will be interview ready with a comprehensive curriculum and career support. Cryo has transformed over a thousand careers, placing grads in 700 plus top unicorns and MNCs, including Cred, Urban Company, Walmart, IBM, Flipkart, etc. Plus, Cryo is recognized by National Skill Development Corporation as well. So, if you are ready to become an in-demand developer, Cryo's fellowship program in software development is for you. Click the link in the description down below and join Cryo.do now. So, there's not much difference actually. I'm gonna take this code from here. And I'm going to say global linear search. And simply, if the element appears more than once, we're going to push it inside of an array. That is, push all of the indexes that we find inside of an array. So I'm going to create a new array over here, const result, an empty result array. And simply, whenever we encounter that, OK, this is equal to the current element, I'm going to simply say results dot push i. That is it. That is all we need to do. And in the end, if we don't have inside of uh, like we don't have anything inside of this result or let's say result dot length is still equals to zero i'm gonna return minus one else i'm gonna simply return our results oh sorry it's result all along i've been writing results okay cool now let's try to run this i'm gonna take this example and i'm just gonna comment this out and let's say zero appears more than once over here and over here as well. Now, if you run this, yep, you see, we get two and four. Awesome. Now, there's this one difference over here when it comes to time and space complexity. We're creating this array over here, right? So the length of the array is going to be the space complexity for this. So it's going to be O of N for time complexity and O of N for space complexity as well. Great. Now, the next algorithm is binary search algorithm. And trust me, this is very, very important for your DSA interviews because it is asked so many times in our interviews. The reason is that because it is much more efficient than linear search and this is much more optimized than linear search. And I'm going to show you how. So we have been given an array of integer nums, which is sorted in an ascending order. Now, there's one requirement for a binary search to work. It has to be sorted in either in descending order or an ascending order and an integer target. Now we're supposed to write a function to search target in nums. Same requirement as earlier, but this time the only change is that you must write an algorithm with O of log n runtime complexity. Now, if you've seen my big O time complexity video, I've explained that O of log n is much more efficient than O of n. There are some time complexity like O of log n and O of n log n as well, which are used in the search algorithms and all, right? So finally, today we're going to see how we can write an algorithm with O of log n runtime complexity. So let's go on and understand this algorithm in our whiteboard. So let's see how binary search actually work visually before moving to the code. So over here, you can see I've written the algorithm for the binary search. And this is the array in which we are supposed to search an element. And the element we're supposed to search is nine. So I'm just going to mark nine just like this. That we're supposed to search nine. All right. So what we do in binary search is we take two things. One is an start variable and other is an end variable. Start will start from zero and end will start from nums dot length minus one. That is the last element. So currently this is the value of start and this is the value of end. So I'm going to say zero for start and for nums it's zero, one, two, three, four, five for the end. Also, the requirement for binary search is that our array should be in a sorted manner. Either it should be sorted in ascending order or it should be sorted in descending order. So over here, as you can see, it's sorted in the increasing order. So then we run a while loop. If start is less than or equal to end, until the start is less than or equal to end, we will run this while loop over here. And inside of the while loop, what we will do is we will first calculate our middle index. So to calculate the middle index, what we do is we do start plus end divided by 2. So in this case, it will be 2.5. 
but obviously index can't be in the decimal format right so that is why we do math dot floor so math dot floor converts it into the whole number just after it so this will be converted into three so now three is our middle index currently so zero one two three so five is our middle index right now so first of all we're gonna check a few things over here if nums of middle is equals to target so nums of middle that is nums of three what is it five so is five equals to the target no the target is nine five is not equal to the target so we're not going to return the middle right okay else if nums of middle is less than the target is this less than the target yep it is less than the target so cool we're going to update the start to middle plus one all right so the start i'm going to remove this from here so our middle was three so three plus one that is it will be four now so zero one two three four start will be four now so now did you notice something when the target is bigger than the middle index we know instantly know that obviously we don't need to search in this part of the array so that's why we pushed the start to over here so that we can only search on this part of the array but let's say if the target that we're supposed to find was zero so zero is less than our uh, nums of middle right so we would have done end equals middle minus one that is instead of shifting the start we'd, we would have shifted the end variable so then we only need to search this part over here cool let's move forward i'm gonna remove this now so now if we calculate our middle it will be four plus five divided by two which will be 4.5 and after doing the floor it will be five so okay fifth index should be our middle now so zero one two three four five so we are over here this is our middle right now now again we're gonna check if nums of middle that is nums of five is equal to our target no it's not is it less than the target no it's not it's more than the target so we're gonna shift and equals middle minus one so cool i'm gonna shift and so middle is uh five so i'm gonna say five minus one four so now end will also be over here so okay we're gonna continue now we're gonna calculate the middle again so four plus four equals eight divide by two which will be four so now we know that middle is four so now the middle is four and if we see nums of middle that is nums of four is nine is nine equals to target yep target is also nine so yep we found our target and we will return the middle over here and this is how the binary search exactly works now did you notice one thing that every time we traverse our array or in every loop we are cutting the array to the very half so this was the array and then the search area got exponentially reduced to this and then again it got reduced to this so in these cases the time complexity of these algorithms is o of log n because the search area is getting exponentially reduced and this is an amazing time complexity that is why we prefer binary search over linear search so great let's go on and write the code for binary search step by step all right now let's go on and write the code for binary search so i'm going to create a function over here called search simply and it's going to take two things nums and the target now inside of it as explained in the visual explanation i'm going to take two things first the index for our start so start is obviously going to be starting from zero and the end so let end which is going to be nums dot length minus one now simply we're gonna run a while loop till start is less than or equal to end so i'm gonna say while start is less than equals to end and inside of it i'm gonna take a middle key every time and i'm gonna initialize with the mid element and how we're gonna find that i'm gonna do start plus end and i'm gonna divide it by two and obviously sometimes there can be a decimal value as well over here so i'm gonna simply do I'm going to wrap it inside of math dot floor and you can see returns the greatest integer less than or equal to the numeric element. Now we have the index of our middle elements. So thus if the start is zero and the end is nums dot length minus one, that is six minus one, five. So five plus zero, five divide by two, it's going to be 2.5. And what math dot floor does is it takes the whole number right after. So if it's 2.5, it's going to take three. That is the whole number right after 2.5. So the third element is 0, 1, 2, 3. So currently I'm going to take the middle element as 5 and then I'm going to compare if it's equal to the target or not. Right. So simply I'm going to say if nums of target 
is equals to target. If we found the target simply, that's easy. I'm going to simply return middle. That is, this is the index that we found the target on. But if we didn't find the target else, if nums of target is less than target, right? That is, if the target is less than nums of target. So let's say, take, the, take this example. So currently the middle was five, right? But our target is more than five. So now what we're going to do, we're going to simply search in this second half part of our array. So simply for that, what we need to do, we need to change the start variable. So now the start will be start equals middle plus one, right? That is, we're going to continue searching in the second half of our array. But if that's not the case, I'm going to simply say that is, it's obviously going to be the first half, right? So simply I'm going to update our end variable. So end middle minus one, it's going to go to search over this part of the array. Cool. And I think, yeah, that should do it. If we're not able to find in this part, I'm going to simply return minus one. That is element is not inside of this array. So cool. Let's try to run this. I'm going to go over here and run console log search. And it's going to take two things. That is the array and the target, which is nine in this case. Let's go to terminal node binary search. Hmm, what happened? Um, oh, obviously it should be nums of middle, not nums of target, my bad. Let's try to run this again. Yep, we found it at the index four, awesome. Let's try to find something that is not inside of our array. So, yep, let's try to run this again. And yeah, you can see we get minus one over here that it was not inside of our array. Great, now as explained, the time complexity for this is going to be O log N because in each iteration we are doing an exponential reduction that is we are turning the area of search to half right that is this is the exponential reduction and when the exponential reduction happens the time complexity is going to be O of log N and space complexity is going to be O of 1 simply because we are not creating any of the arrays or something like that in this uh, algorithm right. Now I'm going to go back to my DSS sheet. I'm going to find this binary search question and try to run our code over here. So let's take our code, paste it over here, let's try to run this. Amazing. Our code was accepted successfully. Congratulations. Now let's move forward and see what kind of variation that you can expect on these algorithms, uh, what kind of interview questions that you can expect in your DSA interviews. So for that, you may have already seen this huge list of questions in my DSA sheet that you only need to solve. Now, if you're gonna go and search on lead code, you're gonna find hundreds of searching algorithms questions, right? But over here, I've talked to a lot of interviewers and people who take these DSA interviews on day-to-day -day basis. And from my experiences as well, I've curated all of these limited questions that you only need to solve for these algorithms. In fact, not just this topic, on every other topic in DSA as well including array, string, recursion, stack, queues, sorting, linked list trees, dynamic programming, etc. all at one place. So click the link in the description down below and download this PDF right now. Cool. So I'm going to go and check this question over here. Kth missing positive number. So the question says we've been given an array ARR of positive integers sorted in strictly increasing order and an integer K. Now we're supposed to return the kth positive integer that is missing from this array. So if you take the example, we have been given this array and you can see there are multiple items that are missing over here. That is, there should have been one over here, then two, three, four. Okay, five is also missing. Then six is also missing, seven, then eight, nine, ten. So as you can see, these are all the numbers that are missing and we're supposed to find the fifth number that is missing. That is one, two, three, four, five, that is nine. So the fifth missing positive integer is nine. I know you may have already guessed it that we're going to simply use linear search to solve this question over here. Let's quickly go to our VS code and I'm going to create a function over here, find kth positive and instead of it, it's going to take ARR and the kth missing number that we're supposed to find. So as you can see over here, this starts from one, right? So I'm going to simply take a variable over here, let count, which is going to be by default zero. And I'm going to count along the way the number of missing items. And when we reach the kth, let's say if the k was five, right? 
and when we reach the fifth missing number we're going to simply return that that okay this was this was the number that was missing right so cool i'm going to run a for loop over here just like we do in our linear search i'm going to start this loop from zero it's going to go to arr dot length i plus plus okay now inside of it i'm going to simply check if the current item that is arr of i is less than or equal to k plus count then simply i'm gonna say count plus plus don't worry i'm gonna explain what i'm doing over here in just a minute and simply in the end i'm gonna return k plus count okay let's try to dry run this before actually running this so simply we're gonna take this example over here the count's current value is zero so the count is initially zero right and we're running the for loop throughout this array. So first of all, we're gonna check if array of i, that is the zeroth index. So if I say the zero, the zeroth index that is two is less than or equal to k plus count, that is five plus count, which is zero. So what are we doing over here? We're basically checking if this second element is present inside of this array or not. So if this is true, that is if it's present, then we're gonna simply say count plus plus so i'm gonna say one over here right that is okay two is present inside of our array now again i'm gonna come for three so three less than equals to five plus count which is in now one so five plus one six so six is still more than or equals to three so three is also present inside of our array so again i'm gonna move to the next missing element so count Again, now count is over here 5 plus 2 and the next element is 4. 4 is also present. Great. So again, I'm going to increment 3. 3 over here and next is 7. So again, 7 is less than or equals to 5 plus 3, 8. That is 7 is also present inside of our array. Again, we're going to increment count to 4. Now the next element is 11. Now watch carefully. So 11 is less than or equals to 5 plus 4. That is 9. Now 11 is not less than or equals to 9. That means 9 is missing and 9 is the fifth index that is missing inside of our array. So then simply in the end what I'm going to do is I'm going to return k plus count in which k represent the index that we're supposed to find of the missing element and count represent the number of elements that were missing before it. So 5 plus 4 which in this case is 9 and 9 is our answer right. So let's take this algorithm over here. And let's go to lead code and try to paste this and let's run it and amazing it ran and let's try to submit it great our solution was accepted awesome let's try to move to our next question which is maximum count of positive and negative integer and this is the last question that i'm going to discuss in this video rest of the question will be for your homework so definitely click the link in the description down below to download this sheet after the video is over so we've been given an array nums sorted in non-decreasing order all right and we have to return the maximum between the number of positive integers and the number of negative integers okay let's come down to the example okay we have bunch of negative numbers we have a bunch of positive numbers over here and output is three because obviously negative and positive integers are the same let's take this example number of negative are three number of positive are two so obviously the number of negatives are more so the output is going to be three so let's jump to our vs code and try to solve this question and I'm assuming you have already guessed it that we're going to use a binary search algorithm to solve this question. So I'm going to create a function over here, maximum count. And we're going to take nums as an array inside of it. Now, before I write anything inside of it, I'm going to create two more functions. So one is going to be upper bound and the other one is going to be lower bound. And these two as well are going to take nums. Now, what are both of these going to do? So this one will calculate the number of positive numbers and this one will calculate the number of negative numbers. And then we can compare it over here by saying return math dot max. I'm going to call upper bound with the nums array and the lower bound with the nums array. And you may already know that math dot max is used for calculating the max between two or more values. Now these two functions are going to be fairly similar. For the upper bound, I'm going to take two variables. First is low, which is going to be zero. 
and like just like we do in binary search we take a low we take a high and then we calculate the middle ground right so that is what we're doing over here so low and i'm going to take high nums dot length minus one and then after that just like our binary search algorithm i'm going to run a while loop over here until low is less than high so as long as low is less than high this loop is going to run now instead of it i'm going to take a mid variable as well where i'm going to do low plus high divided by two just like our binary search algorithm right but in this case what we're going to do i'm going to wrap it inside of a bracket and instead of mass dot floor i'm going to use math dot seal first of all what is mass dot seal so let's say if we have number called 3.5 right so mass dot floor will convert it into four but this will convert it into lower end that is three so this is why we're using math.seal now why are we using it over here because we are searching the rightmost negative number over here so let's say if we have this array and we're gonna search this one over here so if we found this rightmost negative number then we know that obviously all of the numbers after it are going to be positive right so we're searching for the rightmost negative number that is this minus one now if we found this minus one then we know that all the numbers before it are going to be negative so yep, that is what we're searching over here and similarly in lower bound as well we're going to be searching the leftmost positive number which is one in this case so then we will know that all the numbers after one will be positive and this will help us to calculate number of negative and number of positive numbers okay cool so mass dot seal low plus high divided by two so it will take the lower end that is the lower index now i'm going to say if nums of oops nums of mid is less than zero so if it's less than zero that if it's a negative number we found the negative number so i'm going to say low equals mid simple but if we didn't found the negative number so i'm going to say else high will be equal to mid minus one so high was currently this uh, last number over here but now high will be mid minus one that is so let's say if the mid was this so it will be mid minus one that is this one over here right now as this loop will run when low becomes more than high this loop will terminate and then we're going to use low to calculate what is the rightmost negative number now i know it must be hard to understand uh, through this code right now but don't worry i'm going to dry run this whole algorithm and then you will exactly know how this is working so after that i'm going to say return if nums of zero is more than or equals to zero then it will be zero else i'm gonna say low plus one that is we found the index where this uh, you know post negative number is starting unless the first number is non-negative because then we will return zero now coming to lower bound as well same thing we're gonna do over here as well just few things will change instead of math dot seal we're gonna do math dot floor because we're now do searching on the higher end and instead of low equals mid i'm gonna say high equals mid over here i'm gonna say low equals mid plus one and after that i'm gonna check instead of num of zero that is the first element i'm gonna check this last element over here so nums of nums dot length minus one if the last element is less than or equals to zero that is unless the last element is non-positive so we will return zero there is no positive numbers were found else we will return nums dot length minus low which will give us the number of positive numbers great now before running this let's try out and do some dry run over here so we have this array over here and now if we're passing this to the upper bound let's see what happens initially low equals zero and high equals nums dot length minus one which is five now what happens in the first iteration over here the mid over here is two because mass dot seal so if we say zero plus five divide by two which will be 2.5 and the mass dot seal will be two so mid is equals to two and nums of mid over here is what is it zero one two it is minus one right so in this case it is minus one so we're going to check if nums of mid is less than zero yep it is less than zero so i'm going to say low equals mid so mid was two so i'm going to update the low to two over here cool this loop ended now again we're going to check is low less than high yep it is less than high so now again i'm going to go inside mid equals mat dot c low plus high by two so two plus five seven divided by two is 3.5 and the lower end of 3.5 is three 
because of match.seal so mid will be now 3 now again we're gonna check is nums of mid that is nums of 3 what is it so 0 1 2 3 it's 1 so now it's not less than 0 right so it's we're gonna update high equals mid minus 1 so mid was 3 mid minus 1 2 now if you come back low is no more less than high so now we know that on the second position is where our negative numbers are ending and all the numbers before it are negative so simply i'm gonna say low plus one because we're starting is from zero that's why this is two but when we say low plus one it will be three one two three so we get the exact length over here so this will be three over here and similarly if you run this as well you're gonna get three so now obviously both of them are three so the max value will also be three if this was two then this would have been considered as the max value right so this is how we do it so let's try to run this i'm gonna use console log maximum count and i'm gonna give this this array also i made a mistake over here this will not be less than zero because we're checking for the positive numbers right so this will be more than zero so now if we try to run this yep you see we get three over here all right now coming back to our dsa book i'm gonna again open this question over here and try to copy our code and try to run this over here let's try to submit it and amazing our solution was successfully accepted great and that's it that is it for this video if you like this video give this video a huge fat thumbs up and definitely go click the link in the description down below and download my data structures in javascript ebook this has the best collection of the most asked interview questions for dsa in javascript for all of these topics so that you can save your time and not spend it on solving useless questions on lead code